Greetings Ranger fans, Jake here, and I just want to talk to you about the premiere of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Beasts Unleashed. The fan response has already been pretty overwhelmingly positive, with many wondering what it is that makes this season already feel so different from the last several years. And the more I think about it, the more I compare it to the last few years, I wonder, how different is it? Really? Bear with me a moment as I take a deeper look. We open with an introduction to a source of incredible power which evil forces are determined to get their hands on. Soon after, we meet our soon-to-be Red Ranger, an athletic, puckish, generally easygoing and enthusiastic character, who nonetheless has some clear, unresolved issues regarding his father. He also has somewhere he's determined to get to, regardless of some pretty obvious risks. We also meet our first female Ranger, a plucky go-getter with big ideas who is determined to break into an exciting STEM field but unfortunately isn't exactly taken seriously by other members of the supporting cast. Other potential rangers are also introduced, but act more as background or supporting characters for the time being. By the time we get to the second act, we're up to about ten or so significant characters, including our mentor and chief tech support. Unfortunately, by the end of the second act, our Red Ranger's goals aren't exactly going as planned, and evil strikes in an attempt to capture the aforementioned source of incredible power. This brings us into our third act, where our unwitting civilians have now jumped into action to fight off an evil force that is clearly out of their league. Luckily for them, their heroism is recognized, and they are suddenly transformed into Power Rangers by the sought-after power source. Uh, not a full team of five, though. That would be a little too much for this first episode. Anyway, by working together, they are able to fend off evil through an unexpected addition to their arsenal, and realize that they have now accepted the responsibility of defending the power source from the powerful lead villain that they have still yet to combat. So, here's my question for the class. Did I just describe A, Episode 1 of Power Rangers Dino Charge, Powers from the Past, B, Episode 1 of Power Rangers Ninja Steel, Return of the Prism, C, Episode 1 of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Beasts Unleashed, or D, all of the above? Obviously, if you've been paying attention, the correct answer is D. So, structurally speaking, Beasts Unleashed is actually pretty much identical to the last two series premieres. But I want to make clear that this isn't meant as a knock against it. Quite the contrary. This is a clear demonstration of one of the things that makes Power Rangers what it is. It is able to take an incredibly formulaic premise and find a tremendous amount of variety in execution, much like how it takes existing footage and is able to adapt it to create vastly different final products. It all comes down to details and varieties in execution. Ninja Steel's opening felt rather stale because it hewed extremely close to the plot points of the Dino Charge premiere. We opened with a battle against villainous aliens that was set in the past, both Red Rangers had fathers that had explicitly disappeared, neither premiere connected to any past seasons, and both had final battles against generic monsters set in a random forest. Ninja Steel also had the added issue that it took place in a high school setting, which may not have been something that Dino Charge did, but was the setting employed by the much maligned Megaforce, which was the next most recent installment. The only truly new element was the presence of the Galaxy Warriors television show, which almost everyone agreed was the most interesting part of the premiere. Beast Morphers, on the other hand, takes many of these plot points in a new direction, although not quite as new as you might think. The power source is explicitly stated to be drawn from the Morphin Grid, which is one of the most long-standing elements of Power Rangers lore, and has recently been drawing considerable attention in the comics. The villains are not aliens, but instead a computer virus, and his evil ranger creations, which draw from the popular fan responses to Vengex and the Psycho Rangers, respectively. The Red Ranger's father is not missing, but an active force in his life, which again acts as a parallel to fan-favorite RPM, as does the more militaristic nature of the setting. In fact, the high-tech sci-fi setting has been a popular trend in many well-received seasons, including Power Rangers in Space through Power Rangers Time Force, along with Power Rangers SPD. So, when you get right down to it, it's not so much that Beast Morphers is really all that different from the past. They're just learning from the past when deciding which ingredients to plug into their formula. And judging from how fans are responding, it looks like they've chosen well. 
Now, we just need to wait and see if they'll be able to keep making more smart choices going forward. Now, if you'd like to hear more thoughts on Power Rangers Beast Morphers, please make sure to tune into our live stream every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where my wife MJ and I watch new episodes and provide live reactions in real time. Also, stay tuned for more exciting adventures in reviewing classic Power Rangers episodes with Database Rangers Power Reviews. And until next time, farewell Ranger fans, and let the power protect you.